So th- then in the book, you mentioned that Bill would eat uh, chicken noodle soup during late night writing sessions. He took in foreign film and played darts with Jerry Robinson. It seems like you were searching for the personality and humanity of Bill. Um, were you able to find that and get a sense of what it would be like to be around him? You're asking, you're both asking great questions. I, I, as I told you, I rarely do podcasts, but this, you're making it worthwhile because these are not the typical questions. Yeah, you need to know the guy's personality to write a book about him. And I needed that from mainly from Charles and Lynn because they knew him the best and were right. they were the living people who knew him the best. <laughs> so those little details I put in partly because they, they're they relatable to kids, which is my primary audience, but right. also because they humanize them. Mm-hmm. And we needed that. So, you know, you don't get that deep of a read on his personality, I would say, not just for my book, but in general. I mean, you know, the movie, Lynn and Charles talk about him. But I think, you know, the main takeaway that a lot of people have about Bill's personality is that why did he not do more on his own behalf? That's a, that's, and the kids especially latch onto that because at a certain age that they're very much about right and wrong and good and bad. And it's black and white, you know, from like fourth to sixth or seventh grade, it's pretty black mm-hmm. and white. Like either you're doing something good or you're doing something bad. So they sometimes say, well, wh- wh- why? Why did this happen? Why was Bob mean? Why was why did Bill not speak up? And, you know, he probably did. Unfortunately, that's not been documented. Um, so I could, I, there was one letter I found that's on my blog where he does show some backbone about the situation. But you want to believe that the hero of the story tried to save himself before other people step in. Mm. Um, but I can't make it up. It's nonfiction. So that is a, a fatal flaw. And every character needs to have weaknesses. And, mm-hmm. and, and what, even if it's nonfiction, you need to be open about that. Like he's not perfect. I'm not saying he's a hero. He did, did everything right. But yeah, so I did try to you know humanize him with, with details uh, when I didn't have so much on his personality. He was... And he was intelligent. Apparently, he was fun to be at, be with at parties, but not the life of the party. He wasn't the center of attention. He was certainly a very educate, self-educated, so he had things to talk about. He read a lot. Uh, he was also athletic. I mean, he had he was fairly well-rounded. He just wasn't, again, you know, the uh, probably the most dynamic presence in a group. Mm. I guess in in contrast to that, so in Batman and B, Bob's book, um, he cites the Pulp Fiction character, The Shadow, a movie called The Bat Whispers, and Zorro as inspirations for Batman. Were you able to get a sense of what some of Bill's inspirations for Batman and his stories were? Uh, those that you said. Okay. Bob was saying them, but, I mean, Bill was the reader, so he would have probably... Maybe Bob read The Shadow. I, I don't know, to, or I don't know, or listened to the radio shows. But of the two, Bill was was more was was definitely a reader, and I, I would imagine Bob was not much of a reader at all. Maybe other comics, but I don't think he was reading much beyond that. And that's a that's a that's a speculation. And I, you know, Zorro. I'd have to go back and look in the notes. I don't remember if Bill said much about Zorro, but uh, I know that he said that the that the um, the blank pupils or the lack of pupils in Batman's costume. That was Bill's uh, idea, but taken from the Phantom, another pulp character mm. that predates Batman, comic strip character, I should say. Bill was very open about his 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 um, his swipes, you know, where he got ideas from. And at the beginning, he he did swipe, but then he he you know did a 180 and became you know a, just a visionary. For the field and what what he brought to it in terms of psychological depth and range of char- types of characters and just longevity. I mean, twenty five mm-hmm. years. So he he started off, you know, inauspiciously, you could say, and at least in the first story or two. But then really had it in him to do great, and that's very common. Like you know, you think about. I'm not so fresh on this, but I remember people were saying the first season of Seinfeld was pretty weak tea. But in those days, you'd let things you'd let things percolate a bit. You wouldn't just can't kill it if it doesn't sure. get certain numbers in in one in one season or one, you know, in the beginning. And look what happened. So, and there's something to that in the creative field. Like if people are given the chance to breathe creatively, once they get their foot in the door, if they're given that opportunity, maybe there's greatness there that they just didn't tap from day one. So that's what happened with Bill. <laughs> 